South Bend. We'll do South Bend. Um, and we'll just see the stories from South Bend, which is not far from Carmel, right? Um, let's just see what's going on there, where they have a larger black a population. Fox Crime Tracker alert tonight. A terrifying situation for a family out in South Bend. Four young men forced themselves into a home with a family inside, Damn. including two young children. Police say they knocked on the door of a home on South Grant Street. I mean, <laughs> think about it. This is the town, the neighboring town, that has the larger black population. So Carmel's the town, well, a town that has not many blacks. This town is nearby and has a lot of blacks. And they probably play these, these schools here in basketball and football. Mm -hmm. But other than that, they don't associate with these people. A Fox 59 crime tracker alert tonight. A terrifying situation for a family out in South Bend. Four young men forced themselves into a home with a family inside, including two young children. Police Damn. say they knocked on the door of a home on South Grant Street at about 1030 on the morning. This was September 30th. Oh, it's not the little kid the fighting. Door, and the group forced themselves. Who opened the door the for this gang of at individuals? At least three of them pointed guns at the people inside. That's what we're learning from authorities. A little boy in that home hit one of the boy, intruders. Through what? The the little boy fleeing. Fleeing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get that boy at 22. He, he came yeah, out swinging. Inside. That's what we're learning Look from authorities. Him. A little boy in that home hit one of the intruders and the group ran away. Police say shots were fired, but no one was hurt. And they are still searching for the people involved. Of course, if you recognize anyone in this video, contact yeah, who thing. thinks this is going on in Carmel? Who thinks stuff like that goes on in Carmel? If it does, it's from Sons. <laughs> it's not from the gliders out there. Look at this. A youth basketball team is banned from the Pacers Athletic Center after a shooting in the parking lot there on Sunday night. Well, thankfully, Westfield. <laughs> Who, what, what kind of youth basketball team do you think this is? A youth basketball team is. I'll let them say it. This is today. A youth They're basketball like the best team is banned the from too. the Pacers Athletic Center. After a shooting in the parking lot there on Sunday night. Now, thankfully, Westfield police say no one was injured, but several cars were damaged. Fox 59's Max Lewis has some new information about what led up to this violence. Everything is seemingly back to normal here at the Pacers Athletic Center after that shooting last night. Parents here tell us it was a fight during a game that spilled into the parking lot where those shots were fired, and officials say the team involved has been permanently banned. Westfield police were first called to the athletic facility at Grand Park around 6.30 Sunday night on reports of shots fired in the park. Crime scene investigators focused heavily on this sedan, but again, police haven't said why. Just what's your reaction to that happening? That's wild. I've never, I, I've never seen anything like that here in the time we've came. <laughs> man, hold it down for me for a second. I gotta get my to water, man. Hold on. So shocked, and uh, I was... It was scary, you know, because I thought it was inside the building. Parent Jing Sung first heard about what happened from fellow parents. She brings her son here several times a week and has never felt unsafe until now. Yeah. I've never heard about this before, you know. It's really, like, new here, yeah. you know, so... Uh, it's unbelievable for me. The Pacers Athletic Center, which is owned by Cardin Associates, has not returned our request for comment and this evening kicked us off the property. So you're telling us we have to leave? Yeah, we just okay. want to keep our business flowing. You guys own that building? Activity. We do not. So we went across the... Who thinks that this was a white shooter that this the, 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 the Pacers Athletic Facility people would be this standoff is no news. We can't tell you anything. Ah, get the fuck out of here. No comment. Kick rocks. They would tell you everything. They would he tell you anything. Fuck, we all know, know that it's not a glider. So, like, that's that's just not even a possibility. All the parents we they talked to were not sons, but we still know it was sons, even though the we team know. has been kicked out. The team has been um, banned. Mm. <clears throat> Unbelievable.
is owned by Card and Associates, has not returned our request for comment and this evening kicked us off the property. So you're telling us we have to leave? Yeah, we just okay. want to keep our business flowing. You guys own that building? Activity. We do not. So we went across the street to continue speaking with parents who showed us a letter sent to them confirming the team involved in the shooting incident was removed from the league and banned from the facility. So many, though, still surprised that game time frustrations rose to that level. It's just a sport. Just let your kids have fun. Enjoy it. They grow up too fast as it is. We reached out to Westfield Police for any updated information, and they told us they had nothing to share with us and that this remains an active investigation. In Westfield, Max Lewis, Fox 59 News. Max, thank you. And who was shot and killed last night. A Fox 59 crime tracker alert tonight. Attack. It's breaking news we are covering tonight. An 11 year old boy is dead after a shooting on the west side of South Bend. WSPT 22's Paige Barnes is live for us right now on North Johnson Street. Paige, this is still a very active scene. Jennifer, we've seen the units go in, the homicide unit go in and out. And currently there are detectives taking photo photographs of the front door of the house. And behind me, the crime scene is blocked off at the corner of Longley Avenue and Johnson Street. And in the street right now, there are some equipment that we're unsure that um, is being used to continue this investigation. And neighbors are most definitely still awake. A few of them were on their porches earlier. The house next door to the shooting had people come out and they told me that they are headed to the police department. Now, a woman who alleges her grandson is the best friend with the victim suspects it's a drive-by as no other victims have been reported. Now, a neighbor that I spoke to who is catty corner to this house said that she heard rapid fire gunshots, about 10 to 20 of them. I asked her for more details and she said she heard the gunshots screaming and then police sighted. Now, there's a still a lot that we don't know. Now, police haven't confirmed if the suspect or a suspect has been taken into custody and if there are other victims. As we continue to work on this, continue our coverage live in South Bend. I'm Paige Barnes, WSBT 22 News. Smash. The courthouse is normally a quiet place. But the family and friends of the young person came out those doors, letting the world know just who, who wants this in Can you run that back, Ark? Yeah, I mean, wh who wants this in their city? Who wants this in their city? Fuck. All right, the shooting is bad enough. But this is how they act at the court building. You have to be raised around this to be able to deal with that. Gliders that are raised in Carmel, the Carmels of the world, and in cities like that, yo, this is unfair to bring these people around them. They can't compete with these people. They have to move. This is white flight. When you start, when, when, when black people come around, <laughs> this is why there's white flight. Platinum Pig, salute to Platinum Pig, Ock Nation Hall of Fame, which says, somebody should tell DEI lady that somebody used the N-word up in Dead Horse, Alaska, and there might have been a swastika scratched in the snow. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, Siberia, man. Some somebody, um, somebody. It's a rope hanging somewhere in Siberia, man. Go check it out. A courthouse is normally a quiet place. But the family and friends of unintelligible <laughs> yelling, doors, letting the world know justice is coming. We can't do nothing. He can't do nothing. But if he can't give us Tion back, just hurry up from court. He might as well just go and plead guilty. Tian was shot multiple times, resulting in his death in the 600 block of North Johnson Street. While that happened back on April 20th, charges were just filed two weeks ago against 18-year-old Dominic Williams Jr. Will I be able to, to forgive this young man? I doubt it. And I know the Bible tells me that I'm supposed to forgive, but I'm going to have to work on that one. That's something I'm going to have to work on. Because right now, forgiveness is not in my heart. 
According to court documents, she said young man, but it sounded like some man. <laughs> Charger. The car was reported stolen by its owner, and Williams is said to be the only other person who drove it. Cell phone records also placed Williams in the area at the time of the shooting. However, Williams' defense attorney, Jeffrey Kimmel, doesn't believe the facts listed in the court documents are strong enough and that Bond could have been an option. Quote, the facts alleged in this particular affidavit are not strong. There's no indication that he's made any statements that would be incriminating, no indication that anybody actually identified him. While Kimmel says there's doubt in the documents that his client committed the act, Tian's family believes law enforcement has the right man. This justice is going to be served. They already caught him. Let's ride for the rest of it. It's breaking news. <sighs> we just did it, bro. Large My groups of teenagers different. gather different places around South. Yeah, man. Large groups of teenagers gather different places around South Bend, much like what South Bend police is calling a disturbance over the holiday weekend where cell phone video captured teenagers out of control Sunday evening. The issue, according to Joshua Morgan, the president of the Fraternal Order of Police, is when black people the wrong groups cross paths and fighting starts as five kids fighting turns to 10 or 20. And before you know it, it's a brawl and police are. The issue is black people, <laughs> not the wrong group. Paul Crowell's in pass and five turning into 10 and 10 turning into 20. Come on, man. You don't have these problems in Carmel, the Carmels of the world. Much like what South Bend police is calling a disturbance over the holiday weekend where cell phone video captured teenagers out of control Sunday evening. The issue, according to Joshua Morgan, the president of the Fraternal Order of Police, is when the wrong groups cross paths and fighting starts. As five kids fighting turns to 10 or 20, and before you know it, it's a brawl. And police are outnumbered. Realistically, to get every single kid, uh, probably not. Uh, but I would say that you would probably want to get the, the biggest agitators. Uh, the ones that are causing the most problems. The FOP says the Juvenile Justice Center works on a point system, and this type of behavior is not enough for the JJC to detain them. So for the teenagers they do get, officers have to make calls to parents and often wait with each kid, which can take hours. Not having a place to, to immediately deal with the situation at hand, uh, it, it makes it kind of difficult because, you know, in order for somebody uh, to kind of face the consequences, per se, you, you need to be able to identify them. Departments are pooling 15 or even 20 officers responding to these calls, tying up resources for other calls. Police say it's not just difficult, but dangerous. Morgan says there's no one way to fix it, but additional manpower and resources for officers would be a good start. Also, accountability from parents, something Seth Moss, an expert in helping kids reach success, agrees with, even if it isn't your own child. Kids get to this point because, you know, What's on the inside comes out. It's our responsibility as a community. It takes a village. We've got facts. What's on the inside comes out. <laughs> oh, always an excuse. Yeah. DNA. Um, listen, man, you don't have these problems. This this is a small town, South Bend. It's not like a huge city. This is where Notre Dame is. It's, it's, it's just a small college town. It's a beautiful and place. Townies. Yeah, and these are the townies. Yikes. Um, <laughs> these are the townies. If you're in a different group, you would get uh, traded as an enemy. The men tell WSBT 22 that there are a lot of groups in South Bend. What group you're in is often something you do not control. Family and geography are driving factors. That's my blood family, so why not be with them? Or, you know, um, we went to school and we grew up together most of the time. We did bad stuff together or, you know what I'm saying, we had that bond since we was little kids together. They already got this area picked out. So you come here, you got to be over here with us or you got to leave, basically. During the interview, the men would not call themselves a gang, rather groups. But there is a distinction about what type of group it is. You can go around your friends, y'all had genuine times, you'll just be playing the game or 
just hanging out together or whatever y'all doing, going to the mall and just stuff like that. That's a group of friends. But when you got a group, a group, group, y'all not doing that. So it's you, you'll find out sooner or later. I found out sooner or later. You become a part of a group at a young age, something they said that they experienced. It isn't until you're older that you understand the implications. Young, you don't really know nothing. But when you get older and they, they, they put you on that real, you got to go through these phases and see what's really happening. How hard is it to change the course of your life when you get into these groups? Sometimes it's really hard because, like, once you get in the group, you can't change from it or none of that. Yeah, you can't especially just... like when you're younger. Yeah. You don't really know. You don't really know when you're younger. That's all you really know. That was a long time ago. I found out um, at an earlier age, you know, thank you that I did. But it's like, it's still the same people, you know what I mean? They grow up and this is what they want to do. This is what little kids want to do to this day. People younger than me and him. People younger than my little brother and sisters, you know what I'm saying? That, that's what we see on the internet. That's what we see music. That's what we see. So that's what they want to do. But we need more people around, like, you know what I'm saying, to come and give them that same energy. So what made D&B sit down with us? They say that they're redirecting their lives and showing that you can overcome anything. For B, it was time spent in jail that changed his trajectory. Is the greater fear going and spending extended periods of time in a prison or being killed on the street. Really both of them, cause you'll yeah. never know your next move. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why you just, you gotta, you gotta find out what you wanna do. If you wanna go and be in the streets, you know your move, you know what's gonna happen. You wanna go be with these people or do this to these people, you know what's gonna happen, you know what I mean? But you stay out the way, you stand positive, you, you know what I mean, going to work, you on that good path, you know what's going to happen. You ain't doing nothing but being good on that good path, so good things going to happen. We asked the men their advice to others. They said that you can't tell anyone what to do and that people need to make decisions for themselves, but they'll eventually learn it isn't worth it. What would you say to your younger self then, looking back? I say that all the time. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, you never really know. I never really know what I would say. Just stay strong. I don't really know what to say, but like, for my younger self, I don't really know what to say back then, but I just know what I know now. The meeting between D and B was an unlikely one that ended with a handshake and a message to one another. A gesture and a message many hope will start a chain reaction. I just want to say my bad, fam, whatever it was. Even though it probably ain't our fault, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, I apologize to everybody over there. I'm John Paul. Thanks for watching. Here's another video for you to watch. Wow. Yo, Hawk, at the time, it was fun. That's why they said they, they were to turn <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was the best time of their life. Time. When, they're, when they're 50 years old and they're sitting in a fold-out chair in the, on the front porch, I'm like, man, Nobody we was me. wild. And back then, man, them shit was crazy. It was fun as hell. <laughs> we, we, was, we was getting head and stolen cars, and we was knocking crackers upside the head, and we was stealing <laughs> shit off people's porch. Shit was wild. Shit was live, cuz. Yeah, but but you, you you see the difference though, right? Like those people in Carmel, they see these people from a distance. Mm -hmm. And they don't get to talk to them kids one on one like those two kids that are turning their lives around or whatever. They just see that stuff from a distance. And then it's like one day this happens, and the next day that happens. And they're not like in the projects where a thousand things are happening that never make the news. They're just seeing the news stories, the newsworthy things. And it's got to be like, yo, these people are fucking animals. It was really a cop out for them to call them groups instead of gangs. Yeah, they knew what they were doing. They were finessing that stupid bitch. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Without that, she's probably gonna go forward with that. Well, they're not gangs; they're groups. <laughs> yeah, she'll she'll educate everybody, every glider dude she meets. Now that's like, oh, you mean them little gang banging thugs? No, 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 they're groups. <laughs> they're groups. <laughs> Listen, Don't Trevor, they're groups. They're not gangs. <laughs> and when they commit crimes, they're group groups. Yeah, exactly. Are you racist? <laughs> Be asking. 
it's just like, yo, like, I, I just don't know how they think people from a distance view that are not supposed to make judgments on that. When you can make a judgment on them, if there's a swastika written in chalk on a ground in a corner somewhere, or if there's like a rope hanging from a fucking garage door somewhere, you get to judge them for that. They can't judge you for this shit. <laughs> Crazy salute to Doug Chunks. He said he is for the hit the like button before leaving. Challenge salute. Yeah, everybody hit the like button. Um, salute to Doug Chunks, Op Nation Hall of Famer Jerry Judge Hines. Five dollar challenge met by the SG Sun Man. I have friends and family that seem genuinely incapable of real empathy. Black people struggle with this. Yeah. Um, it just is what it is, man. There's no hope for this stuff to change because these people are um these people are, are savages. There's something wrong with their mind. And holding each other account. Exactly. And, and and something wrong with their DNA. This is South Bend, Indiana. This is this is yo. Hey. We're from Indiana. We live in all white town. There's no crime. There's a town over there with mostly whites, but a larger percentage of blacks. Like it's not an all black town, but it's got more blacks than we do. And this is what's happening there. Door knocking and holding each other accountable. It's a new approach on a neighborhood watch enacted by many who live on Huey Street. They say that with the help of police, they are hopeful for the future. But this community has been going to hell slowly but surely. It's been chaotic. I don't really go outside like that. Neighbors say shootings and violence are not uncommon, especially when parties take place. We can't get no sleep. Right, right, yeah. So we up to three, four in the morning. I experienced uh, a few incidents. I seen with my own eyes, next door neighbor. I seen some killings. I see a couple of friends of mine land on the ground, shot, senseless killing, a um, couple stabbings. On Saturday, when cars packed Huey for a gathering and neighbors noticed the disturbance, they called police to be present and talk to each other about keeping the guns away. What's on the menu? Death, shooting, a beatdown. So I use my humor to be able to get them to lower their lower their weapons and things like that. And I asked them, I said, every time we do this, it's always a shooting. And I said, it's not police shooting us. I said, we're shooting each other. Roosevelt Stewart lives on Huey Street. He thinks that the police presence made a difference and has made it his mission to let people know. If we can just have them guys out here just park, that'll give somebody on their conscience to say, wait a minute, I better think twice. And I would rather have them. Think about that. It has to be a cop car there to make them think twice. Not to stop it. Just make them think twice. This is a whole different ball game, but these people are different than the other people. Sisters will call him a sellout. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's for the cops to be there. A snitch. Snitch, yeah. Now the sun man in the community. These people are different, man. And where's that fucking broad with the eight feet of fucking horse hair in her head coming over here telling these people to um that gliders are pretty nice and they're not all bad and you gotta um think about you know being um incorporating glider morals and shit into your your society where's she coming over here with that shit <laughs> nowhere that's too constructive oh it's dangerous over here jack yeah she wouldn't get very far doing that <laughs> and plus she wouldn't get she wouldn't get no money no funding from no juice crew well she did funding if she was coming over here to um um program. pander yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Roosevelt Stewart lives on Huey Street. He thinks that the police presence made a difference and has made it his mission to let people know. If we can just have them guys out here just park, that'll get somebody on their conscience to say, wait a minute, I better think twice. And I would rather have them thinking twice than to only think once, and then we all sitting out here crying. Neighbors say that a weekend without a shooting on Huey Street is a success, but there is still... <laughs> A weekend without a shooting is a success. On this street, not in the whole city, not in the neighborhood, just on this one street. If we cannot have a shooting in the weekend, we've done a great thing. And just think about how many streets there are like this in this little city. Some are blood. Some more work. DNA. Be done. We need protection from ourselves because it's just one look or one conversation. <laughs> Save us, Zaddy. Save us. Salute to this brother, man. He dropping some gems, though, man. He's dropping gems. To be done. We need protection from ourselves because it's just one look or one conversation can lead into a gunshot. <laughs> or somebody's dead. So we all realizing this and we awoken to this and we all want to embrace it and we all want to give it a shot. While Saturday was busy and not perfect, some neighbors do have something they didn't have on Friday, hope. If we walk together, we work together and we talk together, I think it'll be fine. I talked to South Bend Police today. A spokesperson told me that they're thankful for community support and the willingness to work once again with police. Police say no call is too small. At the live. Oh, God. This <laughs> is laughable, man. These people are, these people, this is, it's literally like a clown show, man. Like, are you serious, man? Yeah, if uh, Black Lives Matter spent a fraction of that energy in these neighborhoods, you'd be fixed overnight. You know? How? I don't think money can fix this. Man. Yeah, I think I think those type of people know that it's a lost cause, and they would never devote that type of energy yeah. into actually doing anything other than grifting. Yeah, money can't fix this, bro. If you can get more police over there, maybe. Black yeah, Lives Matter would just destroy the place. Nah, money ain't gonna fix this. More police, and then they'll be crying about the police. Then yeah, that's true. That's true. You know what happens when police? They, yeah, they like, people. Somebody gonna get killed <laughs> by the cop. Yo, they're yeah. gonna make a cop kill. And there are all these some people complaining right now will turn and be mad at the police. Yeah, exactly. The same, that same guy true. will be fucking whining about the cops. I take it back. They kill Pookie. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we want police, but you kill Pookie. You can't be killing Pookie. And Pookie got like four bodies and shit, and Pookie's a fucking degenerate piece of shit. And they'll still be protesting over. Um, Salute to everybody, man. 